Today on Raising Babies 101, we unwrap the hardly discussed issue of infertility. We weigh the pros against the cons when it comes to homeschooling versus traditional schools. We also look at ways of encouraging little ones to read. And later, the talented Dibello Sukwini sits down with us. Raising Babies 101 with me, Carol Ofori. For many, many centuries, the achievement of motherhood represents the rite of passage. The Infertility Awareness Association of South Africa estimates Hore one in six couples in South Africa battle with infertility. And furthermore, the dictionary defines infertility as a disease of the reproductive system, simply defined by the constant failure to achieve pregnancy after regular, unprotected sexual intercourse. To unpack this very, very sensitive subject, I'd like to welcome Dr. Joanne Pateau, a gynecologist who has a special interest in reproductive medicine. And of course, my lovely studio audience. <laughs> welcome, Doctor. Thank you. So this is a, in some places would be considered taboo and in others, an extremely sensitive subject. Why is that so? I think because it's actually so common, women don't speak about it because like you said, they believe it's a rite of passage. I'm going to find Mr. Right. Mm. And when it doesn't work, they think there's something wrong with them instantly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's the biggest problem is that it's actually something we should all be speaking about because it's actually a lot more common than what you think. So to start when a couple come in and say, I can't conceive, naturally the woman always thinks it's her. Yes. And that's why it becomes part of gynecology. Yeah. Whereas in fact, a large percentage has actually got to do with the male. Yeah. There's a lot of male infertility, yeah. a large portion of undiagnosed male infertility sure. that you don't know until you actually investigate. So the thing is, everyone always puts it down to sperm and egg. And if you've got a good sperm and you've got a good egg, you'll be able to have a baby. But not so. There's a lot more at play. We've got to start with, you said it was the reproductive system. We must look at that whole reproductive system. Mm. If you have blocked tubes, that egg can't travel down that tube. Mm. So therefore, the sperm and egg will never get to meet. There could be a problem in the uterus. So the womb itself has an issue. There may be fibroids or um, growths of the womb, which one in three women in Africa have. Mm. So. It's not that it causes infertility, it's where that growth is in the womb that it can lead to infertility. Sure. We like to use the term subfertility. Okay. Because it means you're just struggling to conceive. Yes. We need to find out what the problem is. Yes. And then once we've got that issue, sort it out. You may very well conceive, so you weren't infertile. Uh -huh. Infertile is when really you are we've figured out in terms of male, there's no sperm. Once there's no sperm, we can't really get it back. Mm -hmm. And that can be for lots of different reasons. Yes, I was just about to ask you. So when we look at sperm, what we are wanting per ejaculate is more than 1.5 mils of ejaculate. And if we look in that ejaculate per mil, we want 15 million sperm. It's a lot of That's sperm. a lot of little guys. <laughs> that are swimming. Now, the most important thing, it's not just 15 million. We want 32% of them swimming forward. Because if they're swimming side to side or round to round, they're not going to get to that egg. So they have to be swimming forward. Oh. Another thing is sometimes there's lots of sperm, but they're not normal. The shape of the head isn't normal. The length of the tail isn't normal. So all those parameters are taken into account. So you would be told you have a normal semen analysis if you've got more than 15 million sperm per mil, 32% uh -huh. are swimming forward, yes. and 4% look normal. The first thing we have to realize is men make sperm every minute. So you're making about 1,500 sperm per minute. Wow. <laughs> so if you have a terrible cold, if you've had an appendix, issue and you've landed up in hospital having surgery, all of those things are going to affect the sperm production. 
So mm -hmm. where somebody would go is most fertility clinics okay. have a sperm bank yes. and a sperm laboratory where you would be able to go and give a sample and they would give you the semen analysis, tell you how many, how they're swimming, et cetera. All righty. So we generally say to a couple, if you've been having unprotected intercourse for more than six months and haven't achieved the pregnancy, that's when we need to start investigating. But for me, we know it's a terrible trying time when you're trying to conceive. Mm. That's the time when you start to realize you feel like you're the only one in the whole universe who can't, can't conceive. conceive. Yeah. Or your friends start to conceive. You're it's going to worse. a million baby showers. <laughs> yes. And it just compacts the whole situation. Yeah. So that's why after six months, there's no harm in starting the investigations. I think we've got a question from our audience about this. Okay. Um, so let's go over to our uh, audience. You have a question for us, sir? Like in our culture, if you bat la we zangwana, maybe tole or little problem with partner how, then it happens hore ngwana have it day. Then continue back with the Lord Raiman. Check out the Jotu Dijang. Is it true or false? Okay. So he's saying uh, in, in culture, some people will say that if you can't conceive as a couple, check the food that you're eating. Is that true? So the thing is, is that it's not that it's wrong. The point is that it would be part of the workup to see because if you have diabetes and you are eating a lot of sugar, you are going to generally produce very low quality eggs and low quality sperm. So it's not wrong. A healthy lifestyle definitely mean, means a healthy body yeah. and a healthy body means healthy egg and sperm. And so that would be the building blocks that you really need. It could be something so simple like we need to help regulate your periods. There we go. Or you're having intercourse at the wrong time. There we go. Simple I mean, as that. <laughs> when, when is the time to make a baby? Yeah. Most people say just before your period. No, it's not. Just after your period. No, it's not. It's okay. actually 14 days before your period starts. Got you. Thank you so much, Joanne. It's clear that this is a topic that needs a whole hour. It's quite intricate and has a lot of things to do with it. So thank you so much for your oh, time. Oh, yeah. Pleasure, Carol. Thank you. Thanks, Joanne. Now it's that time that you decide as we unpack the issues of homeschools versus traditional schooling. <laughs> They can provide a better education for their children than most schools can. So, my studio audience, would you choose homeschooling over traditional schooling? Vote now, please. Wow. Well, it seems the majority wouldn't. Only one would. Well, it's like I'm on the road. 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 Homeschooling, in my understanding, is when a child, as parents decide to go to, they don't want to send out some to school, they'll do their own schooling. So they'll get like your particular curriculum that they do for, for Warner and they do it at home instead of going to a school with other kids. Children start working at an early age home and then if one school they miss out at school. So to make up for that, parents hire Ama teachers to assist them in their education. The homeschooling the way in a corner, who the seven done a kaya, and seven Zabawins is calling. Then when I went to the Nabo, Shalana, as me, Nango grandmother, Shalana was good by my true. I think it is a viable option, but it's challenging. We don't know about it. I happen to know about it because my friends are buying it. Their children are involved in acting and in modeling. so they hire e homeschooling but locally we haven't been socialized to understand it so there's a lot of education this is a need to understand it with ES and I would consider homeschooling for my child um, if I were a full-time home at mom because I believe it will want most of, of his katsami uh, would have to make sure the child understands fully so that when it comes to AMA test and everything they understand everything and they are in the correct intact with the syllabus, yeah. I feel like the only way a child grows and fully develops is if he interacts with um, Navayavantuana. And that's how they learn. They teach each other basically. And I would love that from Tanami instead of isolating Umtuana so that he's only learning what is being taught. 
Some very interesting thoughts there on homeschooling. Well, joining me, Mutafuleng Kubuaka Yone Tabaena, we have Shes Gosha, Foundation Face teacher and a mother of two. And we also have Heather Barkley, an education psychologist. Welcome, ladies. Thank you. So it seems, Heather, I'll start with you, that a lot of people don't really understand the concept of homeschooling. Can you explain it properly? In fact, homeschooling is about educating your children at home. So I know that there are um, centres where children can go and register as homeschoolers and be taught in a centre, but in fact the legislation says you need to teach your child at home. Um, and you need the homeschooling um, legislation is becoming stricter in that you need to follow a particular the CAPS curriculum mm. and the curriculum and assessment outcomes. Okay. So you need to go to a registered place to register your child and then you take the curriculum, you take it home and you teach your child according to the phases and That's whatever. Right. Okay, makes sense to me. Um, so Shez, tell me, you are a traditional school teacher. Yes. Um, what would you say are the pros of children coming to a traditional school or, for lack of a better word, normal school? Oh, the, there are so many pros. Um, to start with, the social interaction that they receive um, in the classroom, uh, working in groups with their peers, learning from one another, as the one lady had mentioned in the clip. Mm. That, I think, is one of the biggest pros. Mm -hmm. And for you, Heather, what would you say is a pro for teaching a child at home with no other children around? For me, the main difficulty that I have with school is that it's boring for children. <laughs> and the way that the curriculum is taught, so for me, a pro of homeschooling would be that you can deliver the curriculum in a more exciting way um, and in a way where children can take control of their own learning, can be motivated um, and can develop knowledge in different ways. Mm. So Shez, can you tell me what are the challenges of traditional schooling? Well, Carol, because you have so many different personalities in the classroom, uh, you are really having to aim your lessons uh, work very hard at making sure that your lessons are uh, um, aimed at all these different personalities. personalities. Good. Now, in which instances should parents, Heather, consider homeschooling? Um, I think, as she said, that there's so many different personalities. And I would say that there's some children who might struggle at school because of emotional or behavioural issues okay. or because they have some learning difficulties. But I actually do believe that children need also to um, have interaction, that knowledge is an interaction. Yeah. So you're making a, a difficult choice if you take your child um, into homeschooling yeah. because they will lose out on, in fact, the way knowledge is constructed, which is through relationship and dialogue. And But, so, but there would be instances where a child would um, definitely benefit, I think, being at home. Okay, so ladies, I'm going to put you on the spot now. And uh, this is a segment called You Decide. So at the end, you will be making your final decision. But Shez, if you had to choose right now between conventional or traditional schooling and homeschooling, which one would you go for? And one, one line as to why. I would choose traditional schooling for the social interaction, for the activities that are provided by schools, such as art, music, sports, the happiness that they get from one another. Got you, got you. Heather, you're on the spot now. You tell me. So I think the question is actually that there needs to be a totally different approach to schooling, that it's not so much about being at home or at school, but that children need to be taught in different ways. So I would say you need to find a school that offers a different approach, a creative, inventive okay. approach to schooling. So it's about skills. the child. And you didn't give me a yes or no answer. <laughs> Got you there, Heather. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, ladies, for your insight on this. A very interesting one, I guess. That's why we call this segment You Decide, because at the end of the day, you must decide what's best for your children. You know your little guy, you know your little girl, so you'll make the best one. Thank you so much, ladies, for coming in studio and chatting to us. Really appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Well, Salala Rona will be back after this. Cecil at we're encouraging little ones to read. We look at long distance parenting. And Yami Mami Warona joins us later on the show. <laughs> Ndade Tawombeki once said, a well-read mind is a well-prepared mind, and reading with your child has always been encouraged. Hobani encouraging learning through reading and the importance of making it cool begins being. This is today's Easy Peasy. 
In today's Easy Peasy, I'm joined by ECD specialist Jean Harito, who is going to demonstrate to us how best to read to your child. Hi, Jean. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Welcome, Demi. Hi. Hi. <laughs> and a big hello to you, Rebecca. How are you? Fine, we're all fine. Yes. So, um, reading to your children is very important. Yes, obviously. Why is this? Uh, well, it's all part of getting imaginations going, mm. stimulation, preparing them for education. Not everyone loves reading. Yes. And we've got to start cultivating a culture that enjoys reading. reading. I got you. So, how young should a child, should you start reading to, to your child? Well, as soon as possible. I mean, I, I've got books here that say from zero plus. I mean, you can always show a older baby, a toddler, you show them pictures, get them excited about what they're holding, what is this, and, and it's also a great way to spend time with your children. All right, so Easy Peasy is all about demonstration. Let's get into it. Okay, so for Demi and I, it's our time at night to spend together. Okay, which one would you like to read? Okay, okay so start by so giving them a choice. I've, yes, so she's got a choice. Um, this is more of a treasure hunt for girls, basically looking at what is in the storyline, okay? There is reading, can you find one purple horse? There we go, well done. Okay, and can you see where the birds are? Maybe they'll be around by the trees. Yes, well done, so well done. So it's important to speak out loud as well yes. when you are doing I that. I mean, it's, it's a total interactive thing and that's what's great. Do it naturally, Yes. ask them questions. What do you see? What do you like about this book? What would you like to go with further? What would you like to read tomorrow night? Or would you like to try something else? So is it important to point and make sounds of the animals and that kind of yes, thing? Yes, especially for the toddlers. So um, I actually have also a two and a half year old. I know that he likes animals. So one of these books is just a basic book about the farm. And I'd be like, oh, Nick. And then he points to it and then I've got to make the noise. So you also got to learn to just be silly with your children. I mean, okay, so what, what sound does a rooster make? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're really going to make me do it, okay? Let's hear it, John. So it would be like a cock-a-doodle-doo. Or, I mean, I'm not... It's a okay. different vernac, so I I'm not quite you. sure. I got you. <laughs> I got you. Her in particular, Dems, you love it when I read this book. Why? Because you make all the different voices. Oh, and I make the different voices, okay? I love that. And what else? What is the story about, Dems? Green eggs and ham. Green eggs and ham? That Sam I am, that Sam I am. I do not like that Sam I am. So to bring in your personality and, you know, in, in acting it out for the kids mm. makes it fun and enjoyable for yes. what I'm seeing. Yes, and you also get to laugh at yourself. So yes. it's a great, it's a bonding time. Oh, Mom, remember you read that book and you tried to do that voice and it was awful. You know what yes. I mean? So, uh, Jean, can you give us final words for, uh, of advice for our parents, moms and dads at home on this? Totally. So the whole thing is you just got to love spending time with your children, love your children, embrace it, and just have fun. Don't be scared. Don't be like, oh, I can't do this. This is silly. They're at the age where they want to spend time with you. They're not going to roll their eyes and think they're too cool for school. They want to be in your presence, and they're going to laugh with you. So just have fun, enjoy it, and persevere. Okay. I love that. Thank you so much, John. Thank you. Thanks, Demi. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Rebecca. I see you having a good time there. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much to you all for coming in studio. Thank you so much. Thank you. So go khali ukwile khe. It's important go bala di buka le bana balona. But most importantly, have fun le bana balona. Make it a fun time. Make it family time, and le enjoy it as a family. It's time now for our baby shower giveaway. <laughs> Okay, viewers, as we all know, parenting can be very, very costly. To make life a little easier for you, our baby shower segment is to shower you with gifts. To enter this competition, all you need to do is answer yes or no to one simple question correctly. Is it important to read to your little ones? Answer yes or no on our social media platforms. Answer correctly and one lucky viewer will randomly be selected to win a baby hamper voucher valued at 1,000 Rand. The winner will be announced on our social media. Best of luck. Still to come, we answer today's big question, which is how to deal with long distance parenting.
Kale Amukhala Khapemo Raising Babies 101. The big question ya Rona deals with something called long distance parenting, Kapo LDP in short. It is one of the most difficult challenges facing many divorced parents. But first, let's meet Rachel. Hi Raising Babies, I'm Rachel, mother to a three-year-old daughter, and we're currently faced with the challenge of maintaining a long distance relationship. Now, after being a stay-at-home mom for two and a half years, I took the decision to rebuild my career again, which meant that I had to leave both my daughter and her nanny with my parents. Now, there are times when I would call her and she doesn't want to speak to me. I try video call her as well and she has no interest whatsoever in talking to me. Um, there are times when my family would send me texts telling me that she's forcing them to open the door, telling them that I'm outside. It's not true. And there's times when my daughter's sick and I'm unable to be there with her and for her or able to even take her to the doctor. All I can do is just call and find out what is going on and try to just be there and communicate with them. Now, how does one maintain a relationship like that with your child? And how do I also make sure that she knows that I'm not abandoning her and that I love her and that anything and everything that I'm doing right now, I'm doing especially for her. Please help. Um, I'm in distress and I can also just imagine how much distress she's in. This is a very sad reality for many parents across our nation. We are joined by relationship coach Waronaki Tembi Hama to chat about this. Dumela was Tembi. Rachel, she's pretty much close to tears. long distance relationship Why is she um, feeling this way, first of all? And then secondly, Akayetsang to bridge the gap. Um it's very normal what she's going through. Any separation hurts uh, on both umtwana nae so what they are going through is very normal it's because of the separation mm -hmm. uh, it depends on the age of of the child um, children are accustomed to who they spend most of their time with mm -hmm. so if she, if she's left the child with ukoko or no nene she'll obviously be more closer to them not because she's abandoning the mom or she thinks mom is a bad person mm -hmm. uh, but because those are the people that she spends time with um, mm -hmm. so what she can do is to you know just keep calling when she can uh, keep those video calls coming mm. just to assure them that I'm here you may forget about me temporarily but I'm here in the background and one thing I am tell you know is that wherever she is now she's mm. doing it uh, for the child she has to work most parents have to go and work mm. um, and most parents have to parent uh, <coughs> from a distance it does not mean uh, and it does not mean that she doesn't want to be with the child do you think Jorge turns out when she gets an opportunity yeah. and are there reinforcement words that she can use every time I'm willing when I high just to reassure her mama or thing mama wa horata and mama's out here doing things for the both of yeah. us yeah. give us some advice got the Mm. Yes, she can sit down whenever she gets an opportunity. And like I said, it also depends on the age of the child. Mm. Some children can actually understand what she's saying. Mm. So um, Oaha is about two and a half, or three, yes. or three yeah. in her situation? So, so the reinforcing words that she must always say, I mean, it must be a constant, I love you. I, I'm thinking about you. I miss you. Good night. Good morning. How are you today? How was uh, school? How is Coco uh, doing? So, you know, keep those conversations constant and, and keep them coming on a daily basis. Mm. Um, children respond well to stability in a structure. Mm. So even if she's um, far away from home, the fact that those messages are coming, <laughs> she keeps hearing the voice. Mm. Um, children actually get accustomed to a voice here. My parents are while they are in the tummy. Mm. Mothers, even when they are pregnant, they start singing to their children. So the child will <laughs> never forget your voice and the child will never forget your scent no matter how far you are. <laughs>
So mm. I think the most important thing is mm. consistency. Yes, consistency. 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 So would a good idea be, for example, mm. maybe that day you better get late. Yeah. voice note. Yeah. Yeah. And then you mm -hmm. at those yeah. intervals when the child would normally expect phone call. Yeah. Then you yeah. I that voice note. So obviously yes. consistency in the morning. I will voice your mama. Yeah. See you. I will voice your mom. Yes. Okay. I hear what you're saying. So ribula yeah. yanonga wana from the ages of uh, three and upwards. If wana mm ali -hmm. younger than that, kapo older than that, advice ya kahoge. If the child is older, mm -hmm. call and find out how was school. Um, have you done your homework? You know, you can still parent the same way um, that you are parenting at home and you can still do it from the distance. So good parenting does not look at the distance, does not look at the state of the relationship between the parents, does not even look at finances. Mm -hmm. So even if I cannot buy something for Umtuana, it means I, the, the love is always there in mm -hmm. the voice, in the reassurances, in those reinforcing words. Mm -hmm. And just to check up on the child, if um, you are parenting far from home, get in touch with the teachers as well. Mm -hmm. uh, most schools these days give out email address, that teacher gives out the cell phone number um, of the teacher. Just find out how is my child, where is she lacking? Can I buy anything else? Any books that she may need? Mm -hmm. Any toys that can help with the education? Yeah, who's like get involved. Yeah. let both so here from our studio audience. Eh, nagnal potso like, who yan, lin nagnal problemu, kinal wana ona le nine months as we speak. So we separated one and all four months. Mm. So the problem was like, the third person with him. <laughs> then girlfriend at Amaya, then Udula to the ex uh, province. So it's difficult for Nakozagna family go that province at Ulangoyone. <laughs> it's difficult for Norangaya Galobana because I have to go and come back again. And then it's a problem to me or get lo khona hore ke bane le relationship le ngwana though nka khona romela le chelete every month but the child doesn't know me as he grows up mm -hmm. Why, how do i solve such a situation i think bon ta te ba bang ata bana le yone putso eo arabe ha o ke uh, I think it depends on your relationship. Is it a good relationship ne a khuluma ne a zwana e phone in or the communication is totally out eh uh, we are communicating the thing we are separated. Yeah. The thing we we are we are full of things of But the the, the questioning now uti yola la because mangi mbuzi uti manje mina mangi zanga melengu ya same time manje yola la gupi ugu pilang yo kempa call because mm. I think uti melengu yo puki flat mm. for one for a night uti nzeng kono bona lomuntu then mungu yengu yola la pata then. That's a real mas. realistic issue mm. for for Wontate. What do we do? In that case, <laughs> is it possible for her to bring Umduan to you? If, if obviously you don't know anyone in that province, I was a moon, and it becomes a cost to go away. You go to book a hotel or a lodge or a flat. The money is now booking. Yeah, if it's possible at all, where you can have a neutral place in this province where you are. For example, she can come one weekend. Alale maybe go 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 with the child and you get to spend the whole day umbo nalumduan if if she's um agreeable to mm. to coming through yen okay no so it comes down to communication between but to yes, make it no, work no no compromise sometimes go there and sometimes let her come because if it's one person doing the traveling it also becomes much pressure mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. Rachel, your last words go khwene o reng go khwene ka taba e ka re mona gore ha ha ya modula sentle taba ena yeah my last word, words to Rachel is hang in there you are a very strong woman um it takes a very strong person to leave home ayo mm sebenza -hmm. um this Painful phase will pass. It's, no, it's a normal separation uh, anxiety between mom and daughter. It will pass. Just hang in there and just, you know, keep doing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you so much, Ostembi, for your advice for Rachel. We really appreciate you're it. You're welcome. Well, Rachel, I hope that you are feeling better. There are lots of parents who are facing the same challenges. Hopefully the parents who do have to live through this can now improve on the relationships with their little ones. More to come after this. Don't go anywhere.
le amo khalakha pe mo raising babies 101 mo SABC2 it's time for babies health a to z and letter ya khumpie nuki t for tuberculosis commonly known as tb Tuberculosis or TB is an infectious disease that usually affects the lungs. TB affects all age groups and all parts of the world. However, the disease mostly affects young adults and people living in developing countries. People with compromised immune systems are most at risk of developing active tuberculosis. HIV suppresses the immune system, making it harder for the body to control TB bacteria. Well, welcome my guest joining me today to speak about this topic. I have Butsian Maporoma, Provincial Coordinator, Wako South African National Tuberculosis Association. Dumela Butsian. Kia hoto medisa. Eno medisa le babu khedi. Eh. Nere batlo bo yana nka taba e ya TB. Ke le ke a dictionary definition ya yone mare. How do we get signs le di symptoms tsa yone? Okay, um go bona gore motho o na le TB or infect lo ke ka 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 tb re bona ka mo mo baneng ke gore the child o lose weight the child o lose appetite the child o develop the feveric um symptoms the child o o i mean o ba o ba o phela la pile like be active like any other children and the child o ba le um chest pains most of those are the signs of tb okay mm -hmm. when 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 we're dealing with banabai longer that from 0 or, or to, to to 3 years uh, we are looking at banabai longer immune system ya bona isale strong unless el gore bana le hiv they are infected with hiv mara ha ile bana hiv they still can get infected with tb especially looking at environment e ba phela moyona how contagious is your tb uh, TB is a is a airborne disease. Mm -hmm. uh, so imomo ye. Okay. But let me explain this. Mm -hmm. uh, TB it's an uh, into your body of which you can okay hammer anywhere. Go take sing we know how hardy pulled in our soil lama faster in our cast soil lama faster. Our little control we might find who is someone in the house who has TB but how many the signs of TB. Mm -hmm. So at that stage, a ngwana udhala lava tuba uba chora ngwana and everything. <laughs> So Baba exposed to, 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 to TB. And then at the, at the later stage, they developed to um, an active TB. What is that as? Is that as latent TB. Latent TB is TB long or emo meling, but I saw one so it's a lot. It can for the rest of, of their lives or anywhere in their lives. My long or immune system are never compromised. It can start replicating. The baby start getting sick or mm. as an adult or anywhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, advice you have for prevention? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's just to keep clean. Mm -hmm. The most important thing is to make sure that you eat healthy. Okay, we've got a studio uh, audience question. Do you that? Okay, the... if like a parent on the TB, one of the children who are clean or who are clean or who are on the TB, Remember TB as a into if it lang ka 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 di how do I call it ka ka di fluids ne? It's just a a a bacilli a long or ring Like I said when I started, horiki disease a long or So for a person to get infected unless there's something is for the person to inhale it. So if the if if mama only TB during delivery, and then it happens for a uh, uh, askanka treatment uh, and then in the next uh, few days of uh, uh, like TB. Yes, the baby's been exposed to, to TB. So TB yabana, itoma on the exposure part, like I understand, in the family holding. Like if kilo naka muntlong umongutsuariki TB, malomi or rahadi or sambodu adulanka muntlong, the baby must be tested of TB. Mm. What support does Santa give people? Okay, what we do is we are based in communities. Uh, we go out to, to, to the sick uh, people. We make sure that they take their treatment because for you to develop on other stages besides ordinary TB, it will be because, um, I mean, for us to have multi-drug resistant TB, extreme drug resistant TB, is because it's about to never sink medication. Then this, uh, 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 
wiser than those medications. So to cap that, we, we, we want people to understand that banke, uh, uh, treatment, I mean, banke treatment if they are infected and maybe making sure that they have a healthy diet. Okay. Mm. I think that's quite comprehensive. Mara, I think for, for more details, people can get in touch. Lilo, na again. Yes, yes. Okay. How fatal is TB for Banyane, toddlers and infants? Uh, because of, uh, of, of the administration. When I mean of the administration, I mean the care, uh, uh, the knowledge of the caregiver. Uh, we do lose some of them. And then um, uh, because sometimes the caregiver doesn't explain to maybe the crash uh, lady or any other person to continue with the treatment when they're busy. So at some stage they develop to a multi-drug resistant TB and at some stage they get worsened and we lose them. But uh, it, it, it is quite a capable uh, um, uh, a disease. We do manage to cure some of them, but it's um, what are your eight statistics? out of 10. Eight out of 10. Eight out of 10? Yes. Are saved? Eight out of 10 are saved. That's a good statistic. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Budsian, for Insight Eoka TB. We appreciate Nagoyahao. Hello. All right. Well, coming up next, Debello Sukwane, Yami Mami Warona, Kumpienu. Don't go anywhere. Stick around. We'll be right back. Mozeleng, gospel singer, Debello Sukwini, sits down with us in studio. <laughs> Welcome back to Raising Babies 101. With our final installment, and today we have ex joyous celebration singer Mustudiong. Please help me welcome Debello Sukwini. Welcome, Yami Mami. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, I'm so excited because I know that uh, you have got amazing children. First of all, I know your youngest one happens to be around here somewhere, <laughs> yes. which is really nice. Yes. Tell us what it's been like, you know, being a musician and also having family life. Um, first of all, Ricky, I acknowledge the fact that Bana, they're a blessing from God. Yeah. And, you know, I basically just want to crush this whole thing, yeah, yeah, the families, you know, that get mad at the woman when she's unable to give birth, mm -hmm. you know. Um, the ability or inability, Yahoo Balibana, has got nothing to do with you as a woman. And it's I actually every, want to talk about that. It's got everything to do with God, mm -hmm. you know. So being a mother for me, I really, really thank God for that because mm -hmm. that's about it's a blessing for years. Absolutely. And when I was an infertility earlier, hey. the gynecologist Warona and hey. a fertility expert, mm -hmm. it's important for the couple be uh, together hey. uh, and seek advice uh, with regards to, to infertility. Yeah. Uh, did you suffer that situation and how did you deal with it because at the end we have a seven week old baby i didn't it was just i carry on by four hey. um kipabalo he's 14 years old and then ebeba siabulela unali nine ebeba mahle unali seven and then ebeba yonele unali um with a seven weeks ne? so it was they were not planned they just <laughs> came through oh i'm a fellow we decided let's have a baby, you know. So it was not um, a long, it was not, we didn't struggle for too long, you know. But I believe, Hore, the most important thing is to give everything to God in prayer, you know. Mm, I hear you. you. Know? Yeah. So, by four, do you read to them? I do, not always, ne? because I don't want to come through as me or, or a superman, <laughs> you know. Um, we've got a book, Enaling 100 Stories, Kontlum. I, I, I can't remember the last time I touched that book, but I try every now and then. Besides their books from Koskolong, mm. Koskolong Honali, um, they've banali the reading books, mm. and you have to sign the book every day. If she comes back, like Masha particularly comes back with books every now and then. Mm. So she has to read to me, mm. actually. So I think Ha Hula Nekimu Balela di Buka. So Natsele, I can't remember last time I read them, but she got to know how to read because I used to read to her. And then now she reads to me, basically. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah. So how did we go homeschooling versus traditional schooling? Mm -hmm. Are they all going to traditional school? Obviously, your youngest being seven weeks, not so yeah. much. Um, <laughs> yeah. But is it an option you would explore maybe in the future? Um, I prefer for them to go to school the yeah. traditional way. Um, because like in a bigger you know, um, 
environment where there's different kinds of people, different kinds of children, different backgrounds, you know, because you teach them something go high. So they need to go out there and have a backbone with what you have taught them, you know. So it's like closing them in a cage. I think, mm. <laughs> you know, and closing them in a cage, you can imagine once you open that cage, what happens, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so I prefer to have them go out there, you know, and explore life with other children, you know, and also exercise the immune system because mm. they need to catch bugs here and there and come back and fight it and all of that. So I just really believe that my kids should go to school and not be homeschooled. Your parenting style uh, at home, are you strict? Very. <laughs> I'm very strict. I mean, I grew up Kohai, um, you know, so I think that's how I've been modeled. Ne? So I am a bit strict. A bit. I don't think it's a bit. Quite, actually. How strict is strict? <laughs> um, <laughs> so okay. I am a bit strict in, in as far as when it's during the week, um, they're not allowed to go to the street. Okay. At all, you know. Harabeke, they're not allowed to watch TV at all. So when it's weekends, we allow them to go, like, especially on a Friday, they can go play. Um, when it's holidays, we watch movies, we go out for movies, we hire movies, we do a whole lot of things together. Um, we just want them to focus, you know, on their books. Mm. Um, sometimes, you know, we do allow them to watch just a little bit. And we are also strict in as far as which channel to watch, mm. because we don't want to have surprises, Kabana Baruna, seeing stuff. They have chores. All of them. And hey, they must do them. I hear you. And they must keep the house clean. All Otherwise, the I throw a fit. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's the biggest lesson are we to delaying as uh, met to all your children? What's your biggest lesson? The biggest lesson was for us to spend more time with our children. Hey. That's why I mentioned that we don't watch TV. Because um, you miss out on so much in your children's lives. We have a teenager already. So if we keep, we don't watch TV, Liruna ourselves a lot. Ne? There was a time where we had to stop watching TV for three full years. Ne? Because as black people, we are not um, schooled in as far as certain sicknesses that children may have. For so our firstborn um, was struggling with, what is it, ADHD, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and we didn't know because Runa black people are not the ADHD, you know? We just so you need to learn um, to, to make time for your children, TV and stuff. So we had to do that for three full years, sure. you know, and then we got to learn, oh, okay, it's not because he doesn't want to do his work. It's not because... Um, well, something else oh, there's a problem, one. you know, yeah, and then we had to move him from another school, you know, so that we can know what is the problem. That's when we figured that he had HDAD. But now he actually got a distinction in one of his subjects. Oh, <laughs> so excellent. he's going to a prize giving, oh. you know. So making time for your children, switch off everything, the world, switch, you know, sometimes you have to shut everybody out mm. to be able to focus on your kids and not have things run under your nose and you don't know what's happening. 100%. Are any of your children musical? Anyone who's making the drums, kapo o, belang, sings? Yes, they are. Hey. Matle sings. Matle is exactly like how I was when I, when I was a baby because I was told that I used to make songs out of anything that was said in the house. <laughs> and right now my daughter basically does the same thing, you know. She came home with this spot from school for Father's Day. Um, who, who needs a superhero when I have my dad? Ne? Oh. So she made a song. Uh, she makes a song out of everything. My husband yeah. actually didn't believe me when I told him, Hori, this is how the song goes. Hori, really? I'm like, yeah, this is her song. Hori, no. Like, it's impossible because she's only seven. There's no way she could come up with something like that. I'm oh. like, but we are both musicians. What do you hey, expect? You it's know? in the blood. It's hey, in the blood. Nobody. Yes. <laughs> I won't sing a song, Matle Asakeni, immediately. Like, ha, are here. Like, ukena imi. There's no time. Even so this morning, I was humming. Hey, I was humming this morning just to warm up my voice. And she was humming with me. Oh. Hi, it's Lord Ketsang. Leonor, <laughs> You know? And then the boy, he's more... He, he loves drums. Oh. His daddy is a drummer. Yes. So he loves drums with all his heart. Babalo oh. um, is more technical. He loves fixing stuff around the house, so he's not into music at all. Okay. You know, he listens to a lot of music, but he doesn't pl like playing anything. He doesn't show any signs of interest in, yeah. in music. Yeah. Okay, well, that's beautiful. Advice, you've got four children, so I'm sure you've got some <laughs> advice. You know what? Um... I think as a parent, try by all means to 
you know, pray for your sanity. Mm. Because I can tell you, like, they drive me crazy. Mm. They drive me crazy. Four children, different ages, different characters, you know. I think it's very important to always pray for your sanity. I teach them the word. Teach them the word, mm. you know. Right now, this fav my favorite scripture that they also love is, Arise and shine, for your light has come. You know, mm. so they always um, um, recitate that scripture. Oh, yeah. So teach oh. them the word, teach them to pray. And the more you do that, ne? for instance, if you teach them to pray, those moments where you are feeling weary and you don't want to pray, they come to you and they tell you, Mommy, we didn't pray today. You know, so it's important to teach them stuff that they can even remind you for those oh. days when you are unable to do it. I hear you. Know? you. Oh, yeah. dear Lord, what a wonderful guest today. Thank you. for you coming in today. Thank you so much. And uh, we appreciate and wish you all the best. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Well, you heard it. Rapelang for Banabalona, together as a family. And most importantly, Ratanang, love each other. Well, that's it from Raising Babies. Hey, we'll be back next week. Mar, I have to remind you, Kare Tlo Komele Bana Barona, Kare Bana Barona, Kebu Kamosa Barona. For me, Carol Ofori, check you out next week. Bye-bye. Welcome to Pep Talk, where we try our best to make parenting as easy as one, two, three for moms and dads. As the saying goes, children are like sponges. They love exploring and are eager to learn. Teaching your children will give you an opportunity to learn more about them and their personality. Allowing your child to be independent encourages their level of confidence. Most moms and dads are used to habitually doing everything for their children, and they tend to forget that their toddlers are literally growing by the minute. Start by showing them how to do things on their own and then slowly allow them to take over. One of the first steps you can take is allowing your toddler to brush their own teeth. Pip has these small toothbrushes, a perfect fit for your little one's tiny hands. Stay positive and encouraging when teaching your toddler a new skill. Do not worry so much about them getting it right just yet. Enjoy the moment of your baby learning something new. Once you can see that your child has developed the proper motor skills, allow them to feed themselves. Use plastic bowls and cutlery to avoid breakage. And lastly, once you feel your child is ready, you can get them to start bathing themselves. Giving them a special big boy or girl face cloth might get them even more interested. You can also get them brand new bath toys to get them excited about their new skill. <laughs> To get winning with Pep, get onto our social media pages and enter our weekly competition. You'll stand a chance to win some great prizes. Enjoy learning with your kids and tune in again right here on Pep Talk.